Fearless Gamers, Matt here for Fearless Games, and today we're doing another entry in The Book Corner. And today's book is going to be The Purging of Calidus by Gav Throp. I apologize if I pronounce the um, city name wrong. I do that a lot, as many people who watch either the Helios Raven ne Nest blog or this one know that I per have har horrible ch times pronouncing words. So... We're gonna, neither here nor there, we're gonna go into the book. This is another Dark Angels novel because, as well, most people know by now, I'm a huge Dark Angels fan. And so, I always tend to go and pick up any book that has any relation to the Dark Angels. The only one I think I have yet to find is the Angels of Darkness book, mainly because that, I believe, is out of print. Um, so, this is the story of, actually, the battle of the battle on um, per Persina, where Belial gained a, a lot of reputation from this to become the master of the Deathwing, and so in essence, you're finding out the story of the ba of the famous battle that lifted Belial up into the into the rank of death in the master master of Deathwing, and um these and it also brings up to mention the story of how the um, the Deathwing Terminators became, started painting themselves white over black, which is what their original color scheme was. Now, interesting enough, even though this is the battle that that happened with, they never bring that part up. They never mention the squad of Deathwing Terminators that were dressed in white over black. They just seem to kind of like brush that aside in this story arc. But it was actually really interesting, mainly because this is, again, like the Descent of Angels, it isn't about the Fallen. Granted, the Descent of Angels is about the story of a Fallen before all of that crazy stuff happened, but it wasn't about the Fall itself, and neither is this book. This is a separate story. This actually happens after Lionel Johnson and the whole Horus Heresy happened. And it was a really nice, and again, this is really a nice fresh step because there's so many things that the Dark Angels have done and so many battles that they're known for, but it seems like a lot of people tend to focus just on that one event, which makes this book a very fun read because it's something different and fresh and a new story to work off of instead of the same old song and dance. As per usual, it's written by Gav Throp. I tend to read a lot of his books, and there is good reason for that. He's got a great way of writing. The writing style is done in such a way where you don't have to be one of those crazy, I know everything about the universe to understand the terminology. He uses he pretty much uses plain terminology that's used in the codexes. So if you've at least read um, a Space Marine codex of any kind, you have a general idea of what the vocabulary is in the book, which is great because you're spending less time trying to figure out what he's saying and spending more time enjoying what he is saying in or writing in the book. Now the story, as per, is about the orc um, Gazgul. I believe that's how you say his name. It's the orc that attacked um, Armageddon and has um, and has that. There's that special commissar Yorick who is his personal rival and all that. They, um, it's him going to attack the planet um, Pers um, Pers Persina, which is a Dark Angel recruitment planet. So the Dark Angels don't want this city to be taken over by the orcs, and they're invading. And it all takes place in the area called the Calidus, which is this city and this whole port and all this um, this area of the map. And that's where the orcs are all flooding in. The Dark Angels are there to try and hold them back to make sure they don't spread out and take over the whole planet. The story does follow multiple characters, and normally I'm not a big fan of those kinds of stories. I primarily feel when a, when a book tries to throw in so many different characters and tries to make them the main focus of the story, you tend to lose a little bit. You tend to stop caring about certain characters because you know eventually you're going to not follow this guy anymore. And in essence, you kind of also maybe sometimes get a little confused about what's going on. Because a lot of times with these multiple main character stories, the stories are happening in relation to each other, so you're trying to figure out, wait, how could this have happened? Oh, okay, this is happening before, this is happening after. But thankfully, in this book, they don't really do that. There's very few times that the stories with the characters 
cross over, but when they do, it's either at the tail end of the of the story of a previous story, or at the um be or during a completely different section. So, for example, if character A is over here in the Barrens doing his thing, character B, which is doing his same thing at the same time, is doing it in a completely different location. So his story in no way affects the continuity of the first story. You do learn about Sar um, Sergeant Newman, who is, has who was a Dark Angel special character in. I'm not sure about second edition, but he was in third edition and was removed in fourth and fifth. And they said in the Codex that you know he's just no longer available. And they they give you the story of him. They mention him in the Codex during this battle, and you get his you get his viewpoint of what happened to him and what ex what he did to make him so noted in the Dark Angel. Um, army. There's, um, you also get a couple of stories with Belial and how he's thinking and feeling about this story, and it puts a really great perspective on the Dark Angel's, um, psy um, psyche and how they feel when certain situations happen and all that. Kind of giving them more of a human-esque quality, allowing you to relate to them a lot more. Because there are a lot, a couple of books where they're just like, we are space marines, stone face, no emotion, good, bad, right, wrong, no gray in between. And this one kind of humanizes them a little bit. They're still, you know, perf, you know, the space marines that we know and love, but it kind of says, you know, it's, they do feel, they, they feel emotions, you know, and they feel, you know, regret and question themselves sometimes. And they then do debate is what they're thinking heresy or not. So they do they do it in such a way where you can, in essence, if you weren't a fan of Space Marines, it kind of gives you more of a reason to like them because it gives them more of a believable appearance. The um, story itself is well and is very engaging. I'm it's a real page turner. After each story is continues, you keep wanting more and more. It's and what that's what makes the story work is because you follow each character to their natural ending. So each time their story, their tale happens, you go with them and then when the tale stops, you you you're satisfied with the ending and you're satisfied moving on to a different character. So it's not one of these situations where you're like, wait, what? No, I want to know more about him. I don't want to know about this guy. So in that sense, it works very well. Excuse me. There's also a great interaction with the Space Marines and the Imperial Guard, which kind of gives a really interesting look on how the Space Marines feel about the Imperial Guard, and of course, how the Imperial Guard feel about the Space Marines. And it really gives this nice um, perspective on it because in a way because the story is really told in a third person point of view so you're getting a neutral perspective of the scenario that happens between the space marine and the imperial guard and you get a better idea of it and it kind of puts it in perspective how one side feels over the other there's also this great moment with the imperial guard that is it makes the this one Imperial Guard character really awesome without him being ridiculous. Like, I've been feeling that now with the, the Imperial Guard Codex, they've been making them a little bit too Space Marine-y with how awesome they are. And in this book, they get the same level of epicness without them going, he's just an Imperial Guard, how can he be doing this um, feeling when you're reading it? Overall, it's a really great book. It's a fun read. If you're looking for something that's different in terms of, you know, you're getting, you're not following just one Space Marine character and it's just one set, you know, in essence, it's kind of like a small bit of multi-stories that are all tied together. You also get, it's probably, it's one of the first books I've read where they do fight the orcs, and it's a great introduction to them. Granted, Gavthrope has done a book with the orcs before in the Eldar series, but I think this was done a lot better than the Path of the Eldar series' um, interaction with the orcs. 
And in general, it's a really great page turner. I never found myself not wanting to read the book. I always found myself wanting to read more. And by the end of the book, I was disappointed that it ended because I was just so enthralled with the story and it was just so well written that I wish there was more to it than just this. You can still buy this online at the Games Workshop website or Barnes & Noble or any other local bookstore that carries stuff from the Black Library. And if you're a fan of the Dark Angels, you're going to love it to death. If you're not a total fan of the Dark Angels but still like the universe, you're going to enjoy this just as much. If, um, but if you're a Dark Angel player, you may enjoy it just that little bit more. So, that's all for right now. If there's any book suggestions you think I'd like, or anyone else here that you th that would you like to recommend to everybody else, leave a comment. Check us out on Twitter, that's where you can find out the latest updates to when we post videos on the channel. Check out our Facebook, that's where we're going to try and, you know, post a little bit more friend, um, more, um, personal stuff. They'll, you know, we'll put, put photos and stuff like that. You could also probably get in contact with us a little bit easier doing the, the, um, Facebook page because that one's a bit more open and we, and I tend to be the only one who remembers the account on YouTube. So usually that's why if you notice when people respond through Fearless Games, it's me. So if you want to try and get in contact with more of us, like us on Facebook. You can still contact us on YouTube. It's just probably going to be a little bit longer to get a response from a member of the Fearless on YouTube than it would be on Facebook. So that is all for right now. And until next time, Fearless Gamers, take care.